Okay, now we're going to talk about the EC2 instances launch types, and you have to know them all. Now, I'll be honest with you, there is a lot of launch different types, and this is quite complicated to remember, but I'll do my best to explain it clearly to you and maybe give you a little tip at the end to remember what it like. So the first one is on-demand instances, and this is what we've been doing so far. Short workloads, predictable pricing, we know this already. Then you can reserve an instance. So if you know you're going to run a database for a long time, maybe over a year, you are better off purchasing reserved instances. You can also buy convertible reserved instances. So this is when we know we're going to do something for a long time, but we're not exactly sure if we're going to need a C C4 large, and maybe tomorrow a C4X large or 2X large. So we can convert the instance between different types. Schedule reserve instances. So this is only when we know something will happen every week but only during one hour or one day. This is when we just say, okay, we're going to reserve some capacity, but only for a small window. Then spot instances, it's when we start bidding on instances, so it's for short workloads, very, very cheap, but we have the risk of losing instances. Dedicated instance, this is where no other customer will share our underlying hardware, so when we book an EC2 instance, by default, we share with other people the underlying hardware, but with dedicated instances, we don't. And finally, very tricky, I know it's called dedicated host, where we book the entire physical server. And then the advantage compared to dedicated instances is that we can book, uh, we can control the instance placement. Now, this is all the launch types you need to know. I'll just do a quick deep dive in all of them just so you get a better idea. So for on-demand, it's what we've been doing. We pay for what we use. When we launch an instance, we're going to be billed per second after the first minute. And it has a high cost, but there's no upfront payment. We can just go ahead, launch an instance like we've been doing, and we're fine. There's no long-term commitment, so we can start the instance whenever we want and stop paying. And so it's quite recommended for what we've been doing so far. So short-term, uninterrupted workloads, and we can't predict how our application will behave. So on-demand is amazing when you do auto-scaling, for example. Now we have reserved instances, and so this is up to 75% discount compared to on-demand, so quite a different discount model. And we're going to have to pay upfront because we're saying, okay, we have a long-term commitment, we're going to pay upfront, and then we can use it all along the year or three years. So the reservation period can be one year or three year, and then we reserve a specific instance type. So we say, for example, I want to reserve a C4 X large. So it's quite recommended if you have a database and you know it's going to be steady for a year or three years and you know you're going to have to need it no matter what, then it's super interesting to pick up and buy a reserved instance. There is a slight variation on it called convertible reserved instance, in which case we can convert and change the EC2 instance type and it's a little bit less discount because of that added feature. So it's still very nice. So if you need to reserve, but you're not sure exactly what instance will be during the year, then convertible is for you. And then schedule reserved instances. This is when you know that you're going to need an instance maybe on every Saturday night uh, during the football game, but then you don't need it during the rest of the time. Then we can just reserve an instance during the schedule. And so, yeah. Next, we have spot instances, and for spot instances, we can get a discount of up to 90% compared to on-demand, so it's the steepest discount, but basically we bid price, so we have to bid, and then we get the unit, the instance, as long as its price, its current market value is under our bid. But if we get outbid, uh, basically we'll lose the instance, so the price will vary based on offer and demand. When there's a lot of demand, the price goes up, and when there's a lot, not much demand, the price goes down. And so the spot instances, they can be lost, as I said. And so when they're reclaimed, you have a two minute notification and then you lose your instance. So it's you have to just shut down your work within two minutes when you receive that notification. So when would you use this? Well, when you need basically to do batch jobs for very cheap or big data analysis or workloads that can fail, uh, you basically are fine because you know you can just restart later or keep on going later on. So this is not something you want to use though if you have a critical job or you want to run a database because you can lose that instance at any point of time. Then we have dedicated host. And so this is a physical EC2 server for you to use and you get the hardware and you get full control over how the EC2 instance is going to be placed. You also get full visibility into the hardware called sockets and physical cores. So you have direct access to the CPU and you have this to uh, allocate it to you for a three year period reservation. So it's quite a long term commitment. It's way more expensive, but you get uh, the benefit that you control the hardware in some ways. And so why would you do this? Well, sometimes some vendors have a complicated licensing model called BYOL or bring your own license 
that want to bill you based on the number of cores and number of sockets or whatever. In this case, this is a great use case for dedicated hosts. Or sometimes you have a company that has a very strong regulatory or compliance needs and wants to make sure that you're the only one on the hardware and no other customer of AWS can be on it as well. Slightly less restrictive is dedicated instances. So you still uh, are running your instance on your own hardware, okay? But you don't get control over the hardware. And if other people in your account launch instances, well, these instances may end up on the same hardware as well, but it's still only your account. And then you don't get any control over the instance placements. That means that if you stop and start uh, an EC2 instance, it may move between different hardware. So this is a bit complicated to see the difference between dedicated instances and dedicated hosts. So there's this table on the AWS support website, which I think is great. And the idea is that when you have a dedicated host, you get visibility into the sockets, the core and the host ID, and you can basically place the instance any way you like. And basically when you have a dedicated instance, you don't see these cores, et cetera, et cetera. You just know that the server is dedicated for you, but you don't have any control over the server itself. So that's it uh, for all the things you need to know. I know it's quite heavy. So I wanted to just give you a small idea of how it worked if it was a hotel. So if Amazon was a hotel and wanted to book hotel rooms, well, on demand will be coming at the hotel right away. We just go at the front uh, counter and they say the price for us and we just pay the price. Easy, right? And we get our room. Reserved is when we go online, maybe three months before uh, our stay, and we say we're going to plan ahead and we're going to stay for a very long time, so we may get a good discount, and so the room is going to be reserved for us. Spot instances is when the hotel has spare capacity, uh, spare rooms, and they need to basically have people use them, so they'll have a bid, and people will say, okay, if you bid uh, on this room, you may get it for very, very cheap, but by the way, the second night, uh, you may have to bid again, and you may be kicked out at any time in your room if someone bids higher than you. So it's not a good thing if you go to a hotel. And then finally, dedicated host, where we say, come on, we just want to book the entire building, um, or we just want to book the entire floor, whatever is your uh, illusion. But yes, you just book an entire part of the building or the building itself, and then it's all you. There's no other customers that can come. So I thought that was a cool analogy for you to uh, visualize it. Hopefully that makes sense. You have to know all these kind of lunch types for your instance coming at the exam, so make sure you know them very well. Okay, I will see you in the next lecture.